So, good evening everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, done a little bit more of a general update. So, as I've been working on some more English Civil War stuff and I've got a few bits finished, I thought I'll just do an update on that and uh, just share with you what I've been doing. So, if you watched the uh, Plastic Crack podcast, you might have seen this um, last week, but for those of you that don't, um, I've just finished my first command base, and this is uh, Sir Jacob Astley, and uh, he is going to be my main royalist commander. Now, I do intend on doing Charles at some point, um, but I, everyone seems to do Charles, I've, but I just wanted to do somebody a little bit different. Um, so what I've done with him here, um, these are bicorn miniatures and I'm carrying on using these uh, bases from a big red bat. I'll stop the turntable in a second and, um, and show you. Um, but I just really like this character and the more I've read about him, the more I thought, yeah, I want him to sort of be my, my force commander. Basically, it's a, it's a standard Simpson command base. I've, I've just tried to keep it um, interesting and um, I've used these this sergeant here and the drummer from one of the command packs just so it looks like Astley's given some orders. I've also just tried to build the base up a bit just to give some interesting ground forms um, and it all should match in with the, the rest of my bases. So from what I can see Astley joined um, with King Charles in 1642 um, where he was rather dramatically apparently appointed um, as the royalist uh, commander of infantry um, when the Earl of Lindsay stepped down and this was just before the Battle of Edgehill. Now one of Astley's best known moments, um, in fact he's got a couple of, um, of moments, but one of his best known moments is before the Battle of Edgehill he um, gave a prayer before his men and that's kind of gone down in history and it's been been repeated a number of times and in, in a couple of other things as well but um, I'll repeat it here and it's very simply O Lord thou knowest how busy I must be this day if I forget thee do not now forget me march on boys so I've seen that, I'm sure, a couple of times on things, but that's it. this is the guy that, that said it. Um, he uh, continued um, as a commander in the Royalist foot um, throughout the First Civil War, um, and he pretty much participated in all the major battles um, with the King's Oxford Army, which is the main army that I'm trying to emulate loosely. <laughs> um, he was also one of the most disciplined and sort of like stubborn of the uh, the generals. Um, but apparently, from what I can see, he was not a particularly strong presence in the King's Council of War and he wasn't interested in, um, in court politics. Um, eventually, he was defeated at uh, the last battle in the First Civil War, which was at the Battle of Stowe-on-the-Wold. Um, and he got hammered by a superior parliamentarian force and was effectively obliged to surrender. Memorably, he utters another um, quote when uh, when the parliamentarians come to take him away, which is very simply, uh, well boys, you have done your work, now you may go and play if you don't fall out among yourselves. So I quite like that, I think he's quite an interesting character. So uh, let me just stop the, uh, the turntable a second. Okay, so here's the command base. Now, as I've already said, this is Bicorn Miniatures. Um, all of them are, and I really like these. They are a bit chunkier than the Warlord games, but they are really, really nice, and there's a lot of detail on there, and there's a lot of expression on the faces, which I really enjoyed. I think Astley looks quite stern, and the Drummer Boy looks a bit pensive. Um, so all I did was, again, these are bases from Big Red Bats, and they're magnetised, and you can see they've got this uh, wavy... Um, edge which they sort of all link together um, of a base I just built up the ground form and then built up using static grass applicator various tufts and vegetation but I also thought why not put a bit of a water feature in there and that's using um, UV activated resin um, from green stuff world and has added some ball rushes so I wanted it to look like a bit of a center point so I'm really, really pleased with that. As I say, I'm going to probably do Charles, but I'm, I might do him more as an objective or just something to have. I don't actually particularly want him as an active commander. Um, I'm going to be doing Hopton as well, and I'm not sure who, I'm, who else I'm going to be doing. But um, yeah, so a lot of fun. Really, really enjoyed doing that one. Um, and now I'll bring out the next thing that I've completed for the English Civil War. So now we have some cavalry 
so my royalists have finally uh, got a bit of horse support um so these are warlord games um and uh, i got these in the starter army that uh, miller um sent me so they're they're all plastics and i really like this kit now i know a couple of people have had um have some problems with mold lines i didn't really seem to have any issues with that or if i or I, maybe I completely missed them, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, what I did like about this kit is the customization um, for the headgear. So I can actually put the uh, the lobster helms on and the soft caps as well and mix them up. I also like the fact that you can um, give them uh, swords as, as if they're charging or if they're at rest on their shoulders and also pistols. So um, a lot of good options. Something I have done, and you'll see in a minute, I've only added um, pistol... Uh, holsters um to one side of the horses now i know they'd have probably been on both but i just preferred it that way um so i've got loads of spare pistol holsters um now i've painted these guys up as um the unit that belongs to sir horatio carey um and that is purely for the flag and i'll just chuck a photo up here of the flag um so as you can see on it it says uh, come out you cockold uh, so i had to i had to make make this unit um as you can see, I've kind of scaled the unit down a little bit in terms of number of models. Most carry units people seem to model have 12, but I didn't want them all packed together and I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting with the basing. So um, by keeping them free to a base and um, using these large bases, I've still maintained exactly the same frontage that I need for a uh, pike and shot um, cavalry unit which is i believe 75 to 150 mil um but i've just been able to do something a little bit more interesting so um by sort of just offsetting them a little bit i've been able to just do this sort of interesting wedge shape which obviously you can do but if you've got two ranks of cavalry um it can just look a little bit odd as far as i'm concerned these are going to function exactly the same um and also it means that the 24 cavalry i've got are going to make nearly three units instead of two um something i've done with the bases i've tried to emulate the horses kicking up the dirt so i've used mud effects um and the end of a uh, a paintbrush and you just very simply put it on jam it into the um the static grass while it's still wet twizzle it about a little bit and then pull it out and it gives the uh, the effect of the dirt being kicked up by the horses as they go past and then i've tried to leave that so there's none of that along the front just a dead fella um over there um and um yeah so they just did have sort of minced up the ground as they're going past um so so horatio himself um was originally a parliamentarian and he fought in waller's uh, southern association but then he defected to the royalist cause uh, just before the Siege of Bristol in 1643. Um, and there's not loads of information about his unit, but it looks like he was involved at Westbourne, Cherrington, uh, the Storming of Leicester. He fought at Naseby. He was part of the Siege of Bristol. Um, and he was possibly at, uh, at Sherburne. And um, then he finally ended uh, with the Siege of Oxford. But the, I think the whole reason that people... Um, know about this unit is because of the flag so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna stop stop them turning there we go let's move this back and let's get the command section out so there we go and there we go so as you can see on the flag it says come out you cockold and there's like a a barrel with a beastie in there um, and this is the, um, so we, we know this is, is what was written on it. This is the Colonel's co um, Cornet and um, it says, come out you cockold. And the Major's Cornet says, uh, cockolds we come. Um, now, mostly these these mottos are be uh, effectively believed to be referencing um, the, uh, the marital affairs of the Earl of Essex, who is one of the parliamentarian commanders, or probably more the affairs of his wife. So effectively, this is a direct insult to one of the, uh, the roundhead commanders. They're trolling him. <laughs> basically trolling him um but also it could just be a, a more general slur towards towards all round heads cuckolds we come for you so uh i i just like that i thought that was quite funny um so yeah i um, in terms of the painting uh, again contrast paints um for doing all the base layers um then using a, a few washes and some recess shading and uh and then bring it bringing it Back with some highlights and dry brushing with normal paints uh, the buff coats um, a lot of the images I looked at 
they're not really buff. They're um, they're sort of a deeper yellow and um, and worn. So I've used um, as the base coat is a Nasdreg yellow, and um, then it's got some um, what's it called? This stuff, uh, strong tone wash on it, and uh, and then I've uh, basically highlighted with some Ushab de Bone, and also then brought brought in deck tan at the end. And just done a dry brush over all of that um, just to add some wear and tear well, i'm really really pleased with these i really am these were a, a lot of fun to paint so i'll be doing another unit um probably this week actually and it, they, i got these all done in a single day um it, for total probably about three hours including the basing so yeah a lot of fun that's just a, a warlord casualty so yeah there we go so another unit down um i've got what have i got left i have about i have two units of musketeers i have um some other ecw stuff that's coming that i've got to got to sort through uh i've got at least another two regiments of this and i'm eyeing up where i'm going to be getting my dragoons because you can't really have an english civil war army as i understand it without dragoons and i'm looking at the bicorn ones which are really really nice um, I did look at the Warlord ones, which I know you're getting a big £45 box of all, all of them, but I really like the Vicorn models, um, and they have a lovely, lovely horse holder diorama that you can, you can pop behind the guys, which I think will suit these bases really, really well. Um, what would be quite cool with the Dragoons is to have them sort of skirmishing behind um, uh, like dry stone walls and uh, behind bushes and things like that. So, so yeah, so anyway, what I'll do is what I normally do and chuck up um, a bunch of photos at the end. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a like. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy it, feel, feel free to dislike it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you enjoy stuff like this, then subscribe. Um, hoping that we're going to be able to have an English Civil War game on the channel soon, maybe in July. And um, there's going to be some more stuff coming up from some other time periods, more Wars of the Roses stuff, got some samurai stuff that's coming, and um, possibly also some World War II. So anyway, I hope you guys are all keeping well. I hope you're enjoying the heat. And I will catch up with you all again soon. Stay safe. See you later.